The purpose of this video is to provide a general overview of how Civil 3D handles the creation, editing, and rebuilding of Civil 3D surface models. This video would be particularly helpful when the process of managing Civil 3D surfaces becomes an iterative process. By iterative, we are referring to the condition in which a surface might be created, surface data provided, the surface built, the surface edited, and then further data might even be added, the surface further revised, thereby being rebuilt again. In our example, our drawing contains a surface named EG. We can see this via the prospector under surfaces, and here we have our surface named EG. The EG surface has been built based upon data that's been provided in the way of break lines and point groups. We see this under EG, under its definition, and under the subsections for break lines and for point groups. Under break lines, we have a break line named break line set 1, which can be seen in the surface by this magenta line. And under point groups, we see that a topo point group has been used to add to the definition of this surface. Zooming in to a certain portion of the surface, we see here the points that belong to the topo point group. So in this example, we are going to do some modifications to the surface, both in the way of edits and in adding additional data. This is what I was previously referring to as somewhat of an iterative process. The surface has already been built, and yet I'm not done with it. The edits that we are going to perform will be such that here, on the bottom part of the surface, if you will, on the south side, we are going to remove and clean up some of the triangulations of the surface tin lines that have been created due to this concave type of geometry at the border of the surface. To remove these tin lines, I can simply select the surface object, go up to the ribbon panel, and under Edit Surface, we find Delete Line. Zooming into the surface, I'm going to simply select with a crossing window the tin lines, which I know I do not want. These are excess triangulations, which could potentially affect things such as my volume calculations. Should I choose to compare the EG surface to, let's say, a finish grade surface for the purpose of calculating earthwork volumes? Having selected the tin lines that I do not want or that I know should not exist in the surface model, I hit return, and here we see the surface has been modified. Let's say that in addition to that surface modification, we now actually want to apply a surface boundary to the surface EG. To do this, I am going to simply define a rectangular boundary using the AutoCAD rectangle command and drawing a rectangle over a portion of the surface. Here we see that the rectangle I've drawn is this magenta series of lines. To define this as a boundary, I am going to go to the prospector go to surface EG, go to boundaries, right click boundaries, and choose add. I'm going to name this boundary simply the type of boundary that it is. It is an outer boundary. Select OK. Choosing the polyline boundary, I see that my surface is now reduced to within the limits of the rectangle that I had previously drawn. At this stage, we're finally getting to the main point of this video, which was again to understand how it is that Civil 3D manages surfaces when we create them, apply data, apply modifications, and rebuild the surfaces. Taking a Civil 3D surface, we can select it, and with the right mouse button shortcut, we can access Surface Properties. Under Surface Properties, what we want to note is under the Definition tab, there is a section at the bottom of this window which presents what it is exactly that's been done with the surface. Note that with the creation of the surface, a point group was specified, a break line was specified, the deletion of multiple lines was executed, and a boundary applied. The latter two are processes which we performed. And by default, as surfaces are manipulated in Civil 3D, this list will be modified, added upon, or abbreviated in a chronological order. However, should the iterative process that we take begin to jumble the data and modifications we have specified, we can come into surface properties here and restructure this such that the application of the surface data and the edits are applied in the correct order.
To illustrate this, a potential what-if scenario could be that we may have had to remove the point group and reapply the point group because of some modifications that needed to be done to it. If we do this, note what happens. I'm going to exit out of the surface properties, and again, pretending that we needed to unload the point group because it needed to be modified. Here, I'm going to remove the point group, choosing the delete option. Notice that the surface definition has been updated and the surface knows this, thereby giving us this warning that the surface has changed. If I right click and I choose rebuild, what we will find is the surface disappears. That's because for the most part, the point group, which defined most of it, is now gone. At this time, let's say that I'm now ready to re-import or redefine the point group, having had it corrected. So I'm going to choose add under point group for surface EG. I'm going to choose topo point group, select OK, and here we see the surface has returned and been rebuilt. However, things such as the edits that we performed at the south end and the boundary that we applied are now gone. As we had previously seen, if we select our surface, select surface properties, we can find that due to the timeline of the order of events that we have undertaken, we see that the break line addition has apparently come first, the deleting of the multiple lines occurred next, the inclusion of the boundary was applied, and then the point group was added. And technically, the point group definition should have been somewhere up towards the top of the process. So what we can do is highlight point groups, move it up in the order, select apply. Here we are prompted to rebuild the surface. I'm going to choose that. Selecting OK. And now we see the surface as we anticipated it. Going back again into surface properties, it should be noted that the operation types are applied from top to bottom. The point group is added first, break line definition is added next, the multiple lines deleted on the south side is executed, and finally a boundary applied. Should you ever find yourself in a situation in which by creating a surface and modifying a surface, the built surface does not appear to be correct, a good place to start your investigation is to bring up the surface properties, look under definition, and check that all the operations you have conducted on this surface are in the proper and logical sequence. In auditing a surface in this way, note that each operation type has a checkbox to the left which can be enabled and disabled. Enabling and disabling these checkboxes can temporarily remove each operation type from the build process. This can help the user see what effects each operation type is having in the building of the surface. This concludes our video. Thank you.